Welcome back to The Word. I'm your host, Max Dunn, reporting for The Baker Orange. On this week's episode, we will take an in-depth look at the new spectator policy, update you on the Baker News Rundown, and end with the two-minute drill. Baker Athletics is undergoing a new spectator policy for the remainder of the year. Marissa and Dara are here to fill you in on everything you need to know. Welcome back, Baker Wildcats. I'm Marissa Shimke. The Baker spectator policy has affected sports teams throughout their seasons. Since Baker reopened for the fall semester, sports teams were unsure if they would have their friends and family cheering them on. For the fall sports, Baker encouraged Baker students and faculty to attend games. Unfortunately, due to COVID trends, basketball teams were unable to have spectators attend games. So I play basketball and with our spectator policy during our season, we weren't allowed to have any spectators. So that was kind of a bummer not being able to have anybody come to our games. Um, it was definitely an adjustment, just, you know, having a completely silent like gym when you're playing. So you definitely like, it was a big change for us because we had to make sure that we brought as much energy as we could from the bench so that we did have some sort of energy there for people on the floor. Um, so I'd say that that was probably the biggest uh, like change that we had to make on our team. Baker announced their new spectator policies in the spring, which allows Baker students and faculty as well as athlete family members. Current spectator policy for outdoor sports is we're, we're following the county and it's 200 spectators, Baker fans, family and fans only, and socially distanced with masks on inside of the space. During football, whenever I get to score and see a lot of my friends from school in the end zone, I think it's a lot better getting to celebrate and like, you know, yell and stuff at them mm -hmm. rather than just go back to the sideline and have no one cheering you on. For the home playoff game, I was really excited that we were able to work and follow the guidelines and have everybody in, and but in their own place, right? I thought, Hopefully we've created something new with that student section in the end zone because I thought that was awesome. Mm -hmm. They were really passionate and loud. We had the the, the families uh, and guests that were in the home stands, and I thought that went really well. So, you know, maybe it's it's provided us some some ways into new traditions that that'll really hopefully be you know even better as we get closer to normal. Hopefully next semester, family and friends will be able to cheer on our Baker Wildcats once again. Starting off the Baker News Rundown is an announcement about studying abroad for Baker students. Harlexton College will once again open its doors to Baker University students. Starting in the summer of 2021, students and faculty will be accepted into the program in a slow return to study abroad opportunities. Baker University's partnership with the Harlexton College Study Abroad Program has offered many students the opportunity to spend an entire semester, or even a few weeks during the summer, experiencing new cultures in England. Other exciting news involving the Baker community is Greek Week. Greek Week is an opportunity for friendly competition between the different sororities and fraternities. The main goal of Greek Week is to get the entire fraternity sorority life community involved in raising money for a designated philanthropy or charity. This year, organizers chose the Baldwin First United Methodist Church Food Pantry as the recipient. When COVID-19 hit, people lost their jobs and many families had kids who had to stay home rather than attend school in person. Therefore, the need for foods and resources has increased. When Greek Week was complete, participants had raised a total of $1,160. They presented the check to the Baldwin First United Methodist Church Food Pantry shortly after. The Sigma Phi Epsilon Fraternity used the momentum from Greek Week to host the Spiking Out Against Cancer event. This event raised money for the St. Baldrick's Foundation, which is an organization dedicated to research on childhood cancer. In honor of the event and the foundation, many members of the fraternity shaved their heads. Baker Sports is in the final stages of the spring season. Let's see how the Wildcats fared last week. Welcome back to Two Minute Drill. I'm your newly bald host, Adam Cook. Let's get right into it. We start off with softball, who played a doubleheader at number five ranked Central Methodist University Eagles and split the day, winning game one, seven to four, and losing game two, zero to four. They then came back to Baker's own Cavaness Field to host the final homestand of the year which began by taking on Park University in the form of a doubleheader. The Cats took both games from the Pirates, winning Game 1, 6-0, and then run rolling Park in six innings in Game 2, winning 8-0. Then on Sunday, after all four seniors, Michaela Strominger, Peyton Reynolds, Eva Gonzalez, and Sydney Gastineau were recognized for the senior day before the games, the Cats faced off against the CMU Eagles for another doubleheader. The Eagles run rolled the Cats 12-2 in Game 1, and then they barely edged the Cats in Game 2, coming away with a 7-8 dub. 
The six games from the week bring the Wildcats record on the season at 13 and 11 with an 11 to seven in conference record. They're back in action on Tuesday when they play at Evangel University. Good luck ladies. Next up, women's tennis. The women's tennis team competed in the first round of the conference tournament in Merriam, Kansas on Friday against Missouri Baptist University. Wildcats took out the Spartans four to one. Moving on to this week in Baker football, the team traveled to Sioux City, Iowa for the quarterfinals of the NAI Football National Championship Series. Facing off against the Mustangs from Morningside College, the Wildcats looked strong in the first half, heading to locker room with a 21-9 lead. Unfortunately, the number one ranked Mustang offense came alive, scoring 36 unanswered points, leading to a final score of Mustangs 45, Wildcats 29. This ends the Wildcats season with a 7-1 record and their sixth straight Heart of America Conference Championship. Congrats to the team on a successful season and thank you and good luck to the team seniors. Next up, the Wildcat baseball team. This weekend, the Cats played a four-game set against the number four ranked Central Methodist Eagles. The Cats dropped all four games from the weekend, losing Saturday's game one on a score of one to three and then game two, two to eight. They then came back on Sunday and lost both games in high scoring fashion, losing, to, losing game one seven to 17, then dropping game two by a score of six to 19. That's all I've got for you for this week's two minute drill. Stay tuned next week for a rundown of Baker's athletics from the week, but for now, we'll take it back to the desk. Take it away, Max. Well, that'll do it. Thanks for joining us on this episode of The Word. Remember to keep up to date with all things Baker Orange by following us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Baker Orange. While you're at it, you can also follow the Instagram and Twitter pages for our show at BU underscore The Word. See you next week.